welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel, the owner and creator here at The Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. For today's video, as promised, I grabbed a few more items out of my stash in my kitchen uh, and gave them all makeovers. And I'm really happy with how they all came out. One of them was just a little scary for me. You'll see it in the video. Uh, but I think they all turned out great and I can't wait to show them to you. Uh, so without further ado, let's get to today's projects. Here are the projects I'm going to be working on for today's video. As you can see, they are very dated, very brown, and very boring. I can't wait to get them all made over. So we'll start with the easiest project to make over, this cute little candle holder. Now for this, I honestly had no intention of painting it when I bought it, but when I washed it, it did something to whatever top coat was on it and made it discolor in a couple places. And so I ended up just setting it in my stash, didn't really know what I wanted to do with it. And so I pulled it out to go with today's projects. I decided to go with layered chocolate for the color. So I'm painting it with two even coats of layered chocolate paint and then waxing it to seal the paint. So I'm using DIY's clear wax for the first coat and just kind of following my brush strokes around this piece. I like all of my brush strokes on round pieces like this to all go in the same direction. Uh, and then I did finish the bottom of this. And then I wanted to give it a little bit more character without distressing it. So I decided on white wax. So I went over the uh, clear wax with just a thin layer of DIY wise white wax and then I used a shop towel to gently wipe back any excess just using kind of a feather light touch and then this little piece is done. Now this piece I haven't had in my stash for very long. We just picked it up on our trip over to the west side of the state. Uh, and I absolutely love the print, but all of the brown was a little much for me. So I decided I wanted to paint the frame of this. And I kind of hemmed and hawed over what color I wanted to use. I thought about going with green uh, to bring out some of the... Uh, stems and the leaves and the florals but in the end I decided to go with DIY's crinoline which is this beautiful creamy off-white color one of my absolute favorites by DIY and just a reminder I do carry the full line of DIY paint and products on my website and that is www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com a couple things to note about the DIY paint is that it is very highly pigmented. So two coats, even though I was going over kind of a dark brown, were plenty. And it is a very thick paint. And for me, this uh, pint of crinoline I've had sitting around for a while. So it has thickened up even more. And I am just using my Mr. Bottle with a little bit of water to help move that paint around a little easier and help eliminate any brush stroke marks. Then it's on to distressing. Now, if you don't like the look of distressing, you can absolutely skip this step. I'm using the wet distress method. So I'm using a damp shop towel and just rubbing on the paint anywhere I wanna see a little bit of that brown poking through. I find that misting my piece to help reactivate the paint is helpful. So I'm sure you saw me kind of mist everything uh, and that just reactivates that paint and makes it a little bit easier to rub off with the damp shop towel. Once I was happy with my distressing and how everything looked, it's time to seal my paint. And for this, I'm using clear wax. And you can see here, I almost dropped this thing. <laughs> that was really scary. I'm so glad I was able to catch it. Uh, anyway, so I'm just going over the entire piece with one coat of DIY's clear wax and then wiping back any excess with a shop towel. 
Once that was finished, I flipped it over and cleaned up the back of this painting. I didn't want to paint the back of this frame just because it's going to be on a wall, but I did want it to at least look decent, so I wiped back any uh, paint that had leached over onto the back of it. Then it's time to remove my tape and clean up the glass, and then this little piece will be finished. And I have to tell you, I absolutely love the choice of the crinoline. I think it's perfect for this picture. My third and final project for today is this little cabinet corner shelf thing that I've had sitting in my kitchen for a while so long that it had water droplets all over the top it was filthy again uh, and it really really needed a bath so that's where I'm starting is just washing it I uh, used crud cutter and then followed that up with some clean water uh, just to get any yucky gunk and residue off of it now this had a hole in the top of it. I'm pretty sure at one point it had a spindle top or something like that in it. I decided I didn't want to try and find something to go in the hole and so instead I am just filling it. For that I'm using Durham water putty and I mix it up pretty thick and squished it down into the hole as best I could. I left a little bit of a mound on the top because it does tend to shrink a little and once it was dry I took it out and sanded it nice and smooth with some 220 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander. Then it was finally time to paint. Now I had already decided that I needed to make this piece extra difficult on myself and that I was going to put decoupage paper on the back of it which meant having to cut all of my corners in to make sure not to get any paint on the back walls of this little cabinet. So it definitely added a difficulty factor that I wasn't planning on when I started but uh, I love the way it turned out. I can't wait to get to the end to show you <laughs> but anyway this is me putting the green paint on this this little cabinet and I did go over this with two coats and this is gypsy green by DIY now I know for a lot of you this green is very reminiscent of the avocado green from the 70s and so you're not huge fans and that's fine but there are a few reasons I picked this particular green. I like the color because it's a little bit of an ode to the age of this piece. Uh, I like the fact that gypsy green trans transitions well from uh, spring into summer and into fall and it also is a really good match for the painting that I had uh, redone the frame on in project two uh, as far as the greens go that were in the florals so that's kind of why I picked this particular color. I did take it outside and do some distressing. I'm doing that with by hand with some 220 grit sandpaper. I really wanted to smooth out the paint and again just bring some of that uh, vintage wood look back from underneath the paint. Uh, once I was done with that, here I am just dusting it off. It was pretty gross when I finished. Uh, and then I took it back inside and I wiped it down really well with a damp shop towel to get rid of any other sanding dust. I also wanted to make sure that the edges were nice and sharp where I was going to be putting the decoupage paper and that everything was nice and clean uh, and I also used this opportunity to do a little bit of additional wet distressing on some of the areas of this piece. Once I was done cleaning it back up, it was time to move on to the next step which is painting the back of this white. For this I'm using DIY's White Swan. I wanted a nice crisp clean white and honestly this is a step that is not absolutely necessary and in hindsight I almost wish I would have just gone right over the wood with my paper. You'll see why in a bit uh, but this is pretty standard procedure for laying down decoupage paper so that your image on your paper really stands out and is true to whatever color is in the paper. 
I did go over this with two coats of the DIY White Swan and then I went ahead and sealed the white with Big Top and the reason I did this is that when I'm using my decoupage medium and in this case I'm going to be using the clear uh patina liquid patina by DIY that can reactivate your paint and I knew I was going to have to really work with that patina quite a bit and I didn't want the white reactivating and leaching into my paper which is why I went ahead and sealed it first with the big top I let that dry in the meantime I cut out my pieces of the decoupage paper and this paper is called pretty meadows and it's by redesign with prima once my paper was cut out, I did take it and with a hot iron and a little bit of water, I ironed it to get any wrinkles out. So I had a nice smooth piece of decoupage paper to work with. And then I began using the liquid patina just along the back corners. And for about two inches from each, from the corner going each direction, I laid down a pretty thick layer of uh, the, the liquid patina, made sure it was even but it definitely needs a good coat of that patina for this thicker paper. Once I made sure my edges were nice and straight, I went ahead and worked the liquid patina towards the front of the cabinet on one side, laying my paper down and smoothing it out as I went, trying to work in three or four inch sections uh, so that I'm not putting down too much patina and giving it any time to dry in between. Once I have that part portion of the paper laid down, I went ahead and went over it with a good coat of liquid patina over the top. And again, I am making sure that this is a nice, good, thick coat of the liquid patina. You don't want it gloppy or anything like that, nice and smooth, uh, but it definitely takes a little bit more patina for this thicker, fibrous paper. Once I finished that side, I flipped it around and finished decoupaging down the other side of the paper. I lifted it up almost back to the very corner, laid down more liquid patina, and then rolled the paper forward, smoothed it out with my fingers, making sure it was very well adhered right in the corner, uh, and then just worked my way to the front of the cabinet, uh, putting down the patina and then laying that paper down. And then I finished off this section of the shelf by adding another uh, coat of the liquid patina to the top of the paper. I did this same technique to the other section of the uh, cabinet and then set it aside to let it dry thoroughly before I moved on to uh, removing the excess paper from the sides. For that, I grabbed a little piece of 120 grit sandpaper and I am just in a very careful downward sweeping motion, uh, cutting that paper in essence with the sandpaper and smoothing out the edge of the little cabinet. This is a really easy way to remove excess uh, decoupage paper and it's uh, it just makes it nice and since I would already distressed this piece it really didn't matter if I sanded through to uh, some of the darker wood underneath and I actually did go through and anywhere that some of the white paint was showing I just sanded that away to show the dark wood instead. Lastly, it's time to seal my paint. And this, guys, is where things went a little scary for me. Uh, I started off with clear wax. And I knew I wanted to wax this piece. And I went ahead and went over the entire thing with a good coat of DIY's clear wax, even the decoupage paper. And I hadn't really decided at that point yet how I wanted to finish off the decoupage paper. For me, honestly, it is way too stark and way too white uh, for this cabinet. And I really, it's cute, but I really wasn't super happy with it. And I had a feeling I was going to want to dark wax this entire piece. And so that's why I went ahead and waxed over the decoupage fabric as well. So this is me just adding one clear coat of the, or one good coat of the clear wax to the entire piece and then wiping back the excess with a shop towel in preparation for dark wax. I decided to ease myself into the dark wax by doing the back side of the cabinet first. Uh, and I am just applying 
one even coat of the dark wax. I'm using a bigger uh, brush this go round than you've probably seen me use before, uh, but it's a very soft bristle brush. And I did mix in a little bit of mineral spirits with my dark wax to make it move around a little easier. And then this is where things got scary. I went over the decoupage paper with the dark wax and it darkened it up. But as I looked at it, I was like, oh, it's awfully dark. And I was like, what did you do? And so I went and grabbed my clear wax and my clear wax brush and I put some clear wax on it and really worked that dark wax around to make it more even and less blotchy. And the clear wax acts as a little bit of an eraser. So it definitely lightened it up some. And by the time I was finished, I was like, oh, okay, that's not so bad because there was really no going back from this. Once I had the dark wax on that paper it was an all or nothing kind of thing you can see here it really just darkened it up enough that it blends in a little bit better with the cabinet and honestly I really like how it ended up turning out I probably could have saved myself all the anxiety by just putting the decoupage paper right over the wood but thankfully in the end everything worked out projects for today. I hope you liked them and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you did uh, and if you haven't already I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and then just hit that little notification bell so you don't miss anything. Also don't forget to comment below and let me know which of the projects was your favorite uh, for me. Uh, definitely the cabinet mainly because I was so afraid that I had ruined it uh, and I'm glad for the fact that it turned out really well at the end. So so thank goodness for that. Anyway, for a Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday's video, can't believe it's going to be the new year already then. Um, happy 2024, you guys. Happy new year. Anyway, for Tuesday's video, I'm just going to be more of the same. I'm going to pull a few more items out of my stash and try and get those done for you guys. So I've already got one sitting aside that I'm really kind of excited for. Uh, so please join me for that. Just a quick reminder, if you need any of the DIY products you saw me use today, or if you're in the market for some transfers or decoupage paper or any of that kind of stuff, I carry Redesign with Prima, uh, the full DIY line, uh, Roy Cycled, uh, Roy Cycled Treasures decoupage paper and Sweet Pick and Smoke paint. So all of those are available on my website at www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com. Again, you guys, Happy New Year. I hope you have a great, great weekend. And I hope you'll join me back here on Tuesday for that video. Until then, thank you so much for being here. Bye.